Good afternoon. My name is Liz Philman, and it is my honor to present the 2019 Albert M. Sachs Paul A. Frund Award for Teaching Excellence to Professor Richard Lazarus. Each year, this award is presented to one professor for teaching ability, attentiveness to student concerns, and general contributions to student life at HLS. Professor Lazarus graduated with degrees in chemistry and economics from the University of Illinois and went on to earn his JD from Harvard Law School, graduating with a class of 1979. In addition to teaching at Harvard Law School, Professor Lazarus has authored two books and has represented clients in 40 cases before the United States Supreme Court. Those who have had Professor Lazarus in class, as well as those who have not, know how much he cares about this school and its students. Professor Lazarus has helped many students in the class of 2019 in their academic and professional endeavors, providing career advice, research opportunities, and clerkship recommendations. In addition, he has gone out of his way to support students outside of the classroom. Professor Lazarus can always be spotted sitting in the front row of parity each year. And as he planned the bicentennial celebration last year, he ensured that the myriad talents and interests of students and alumni were represented, highlighting the community that makes HLS such an incredible place. Harvard Law School is so fortunate to have Professor Lazarus, and he has been integral in shaping the last three years for many of us in the class of 2019 who had the opportunity to know and learn from him. As one student wrote in their nomination of Professor Lazarus for this award, his love for this school is infectious. Professor Lazarus, on behalf of the class of 2019, thank you for everything that you have done for your students, for Section 5, and for the HLS community. Congratulations. Thank you, Liz and the class of 2019 for this wonderful award. The Sachs Freund Teaching Award was established actually in 1992 at the instigation of the class marshals of that year. As they described it to me recently, it had been a tumultuous and difficult year here at Harvard Law School, and they sought by creating this award to, quote, sprinkle a little love, unquote. <laughs> for me, there is no better, no more meaningful award. My father was a teacher, a professor of physics at the University of Illinois in Urbana, Illinois, where I was born and raised, and where I went to college, as Liz said. He was a celebrated teacher of introductory physics. His teaching evaluations would routinely say, Professor Lazarus raises physics from the dead. <laughs> I did not know any lawyers growing up. I knew only teachers. In my world, that was the coin of professional success, being an excellent teacher. There was no higher honor to be achieved. My father met my mother when they were both undergraduates at the University of Chicago. My mother was no less a role model. She was not a formal professor like my father, but she was a fabulous mentor to young people. She loved helping to launch young people's careers something I have tried to take to heart in my own life. I cannot help but think of both of them today where I now stand. They married in Chicago in August of 1943. They took the train to Boston, and they had their honeymoon at the Sheridan Commander across the Cambridge Commons. Their first home was on Everett Street, across from Shaw Hall, where they lived in Terry Terrace apartments, where many law students live today. My father worked right there, across Homeless Field, for the US military during the war, doing research on radar jamming in preparation for the D-Day invasion. They would have loved this award, and so do I. I do many things, but nothing is more important to me than my teaching. It's the most fun, exciting, challenging, and rewarding thing I do, and nowhere has it been more fun, exciting, and challenging than Harvard Law School. As Liz mentioned, I have not taught at Harvard Law School my entire academic career. In my 20s, I taught at Indiana University in Bloomington. In my 30s, 
I taught at Washington University in St. Louis. And in my 40s and early 50s, I taught in Georgetown at DC. And then in spring 2010, I received a most extraordinary phone call from then Harvard Law School Dean Martha Minow, inviting me to join the Harvard Law School faculty. It was wonderful, it was exciting, it was gratifying to get that call, but it was far from clear that I would accept the offer. At the time, I was a very happy member of the Georgetown faculty. And as my family will tell you, I'm always wary of trying to make happy people happier. <laughs> but here's what closed the deal for me. This is true, you. It was the opportunity to teach Harvard Law School students. It's such an extraordinary privilege. I've taught at many places. I've had many spectacular students at many places I've taught. But teaching here is profoundly different. It's not necessarily with any one student. It is more what happens when you're all brought together in the same place. So much talent, so much hard work, so much constructive ambition, and so much engagement combined. I'll be teaching something here I've taught for years before. And I look out and I'll see a head in the classroom kind of turn like this, quizzically, thinking, really? You're saying that? I call on them and it begins. Uh, unanticipated conversation. What I've learned here at Harvard is the importance of faculty saying less and letting students say more. The student body is the best part of Harvard Law School. Yes, the law school boasts of fabulous teachers, classes, clinics, and institutes, but it's all secondary to the main event, classmates and the friendships forged here. It's the best part when I was a student here 40 years ago, and it's no different today. Year after year, it is the most surprising and wondrous thing about Harvard Law School. Far more than a great law school, which it is, it's where extraordinary friendships are forged. And when you leave here, you will not leave those friendships behind. My own from Harvard Law School have been the most enduring of my life, beginning here at Harvard Law School and persisting now for four decades. My classmates and I have celebrated together the most joyous moments of our lives. We have laughed together, we have loved together. We've enjoyed marriages and births. We have also cried together and mourned together, enduring life's inevitable challenges. They are friendships born from affection, love, and loyalty. We've never allowed our differences to preclude our friendships. Differences in backgrounds, differences in outlooks, differences in politics. We've always found strength in our differences and strive to learn from each other, not just to persuade, but sometimes to be persuaded. And that is why Harvard Law School's student body today is even better than in my day. It is fabulously, it is gloriously diverse along so many dimensions. I also have to give a special shout out to Section 5. You were incredible from day one. The most engaged students I've ever had in a classroom. The most loving, supportive, modest, <laughs> and cohesive a community outside the classroom. I could not be more pleased and proud and grateful to have been your teacher, and I will miss your company tremendously. And that is a secret that few students appreciate. Law faculty may appear a curmudgeonly lot, but our joy in your graduation is invariably mixed with a tinge of sadness as we see you go. I'd like to close with a very brief charge. Do not measure your life by your Harvard Law School degree, but by what you do with it. This is not a time to rest on your laurels. It's not a time for passive acquiescence, but a time for active engagement. The challenges that our nation faces right now, indeed the entire world, are enormous, far greater than when you began law school in August 2016. Much has happened since then. Long-standing accepted norms of governance have too often been abandoned with potentially calamitous consequences in ways and degree I would never have thought possible in 2016. So long as you are actively engaged in addressing those challenges, we can all be optimistic about our future. It requires your becoming leaders and in supporting leaders who possess integrity and sound character 
and who seek to address injustice and not simply to make deals to accumulate power and profits, whatever their party affiliation. That is the good news. But here is a sobering reminder. If you instead become passive, if you instead become disenchanted and so alienated, you become disengaged and you steal your own voices or refuse to listen to voices other than those with whom you already agree, remain in an echo chamber, the cost will be enormous as recent events have made clear. Enjoy the day. Celebrate with loved ones tomorrow. Take the weekend off. <laughs> but next Monday, focus on what you can do to put our nation and our world back on track. We need you. And be sure, just like the class of 1992, to sprinkle a little love, too, along the way. Thank you.